All right, are we live? Gosh, I can never tell. Let me see, guys. If you're watching this online, let me know. I think I'm live. And voila. Awesome. Hello and welcome, my friends. How would you like to get some real-world Power BI experience? Now, this is something that uh, that is a challenge for a lot of the students who join my course and a lot of folks out there. And I had this idea which I wanted to try, and that's what we're going through right now in our Learn Power BI class, which is, I call it Real Power BI. And we're working with a local businesswoman, one and only Kimberly Marie. She's a hairstylist and a business coach, and she has brought her real world data set to our class. And our class is working through that building a, a Power BI solution for her. Now, here's why I think it's this is very important. Now, for one, learning comes from doing, right? But, you know, it's, it's not about, imagine if you were playing tennis, right? If you wanted to learn tennis, and all you did was you hit that ball against the wall all day long. You know, yeah, you would get really good at hitting the ball against the wall, but once you face a real opponent, you know, yeah, you would probably embarrass yourself. So I see a lot of people who, who kind of keep working in their own void, who don't have the opportunity to have this back and forth because it's not just about the science, it's art plus science. So how do you establish rapport with a new client or it could be internal or external, right? It could be within your company or external, but how do you establish rapport? How do you get started? How do you do requirements? How do you, you know, manage change? How do you set their expectations? All of those small things come into that. And I wanted all of my students to experience that. So that's been uh, Real Power BI, and I will share with you, I just wanted to today to spend some time and share with you kind of the update, the experience, how that's been going, uh, how a class has been going through. First of all, a big thanks to Kimberly for stepping up and doing this with the class. Uh, she knows that she's the guinea pig because we haven't done this before and we don't don't really, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going well so far, but th there certainly have been some challenges as well. And uh, I will say that there was a lot of interest inside the course. And initially, so we generally have two, two groups of students in a class. One are kind of in it for themselves. I mean, these are freelancers, consultants, or looking to be consultants, um, or, or yeah, or, or just, you know, just looking to kind of grow their own career. And then there's the other set of people who, uh, hey, who doesn't like to grow their career, but they're really focused on deploying Power BI within the organization. So they're in an existing organization. I call these guys the Power BI pioneers, right? They're spearheading Power BI within the organization. And I really expected that only the first set of groups, these would be interested in this Real world Power BI, but I've had people from both sides of the aisle. Everybody's interested, and now in hindsight, that makes sense because it, uh, you know, this kind of experience is valuable to anybody. You can have this experience here in this setting, in this control setting, and then be able to apply it to your own projects. So this is a good kind of a safe area to play with, if you will. And of course, we're doing it in a group that also motivates everybody and keeps them going. So yeah, good participation and and. I thank my students as well for kind of stepping up and bearing with me. I've had some snafus here and there. So let me pick you up at week one. So week one, we had Kimberly join. She was on vacation in Hawaii, but she joined, called in from there. That was really cool. And we just kind of try to gather her requirements, talk about, just, just get a high level feel, look at her data files, and I'll show uh, some of the data files with you. Um, and she has uh, two sets of files. One is what we call actuals. Now, she didn't really call it actuals. She had a prop, some name for it. But in my mind, it's the actuals. So she's recording her actuals in here. And, uh, you know, yeah, different months and so forth. And she had her own setup in Excel. And obviously, it kind of works, but it has a lot of limitations as well, and which is what we're trying to solve for her. And then she had a forecast as well, which is another file which I'm not going to show to you right now. So we just had a general discussion and talked about that. And then it's funny. I've been working with Power BI for so long, but only working with through this project, I had this clarity because when I saw her file, I saw what she was doing. So she was doing things like this. So notice here. Here, how she's entering data so what she's saying here is this is January the 2nd but she's putting a T over there to indicate that that is a Thursday because she wanted to get the trends based on weekday now we know that it, it, there's a far better way to do that in Power BI right but the challenge that we see that people often do uh, face is that their data entry how they're entering data and managing data and their data model 
and and as much as that concept can be represented in Excel, I mean, there is a model, data entry, data model, and reporting. It's all kind of smushed together. It's all in one place. And the first thing that we tried to do was to kind of separate that. And again, uh, some of it is is kind of back end. You don't really need to. I mean, we did in, in case of Kimberly, we did talk to Kimberly and talk to her about that and explain to her what we mean by data model and so forth. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's the style. I, I try not to leave them in the dark. I do share uh, what's going on kind of under the hood as well. Uh, so yeah, so that was week one. And after that, it was off to the races. It was all my students kind of working on this problem. And I will admit, I was kind of nervous coming into today when we had a live Q&A call where Kimberly joined it again. And I had to present what the students had done and I hadn't had a chance to look at it at all so we were live on the call with her but it went great and there was some great discussion in here so um, a couple of students submitted this um, some some did in Excel and that was great too you can use Excel as well as Power BI Excel really has Power BI built in now it's the modern Excel so it's got all the bells and whistles but uh, Eric kind of walked us through the model he showed us in the query editor how he's combining those multiple files and then he just walked through a lot of different things and that's where I think that Power BI is Agile BI it has to be an iterative process so we just worked for one week presented her something and we learned so much I mean we didn't even you don't know what you don't know right so only when we started showing it to her they're like huh why is it negative here and that led us to realize that the data was actually at a different grain. There's one set of data that is being captured daily, and then there's another set of data, retails, uh, retail sold and expenses like rent, which is being captured at a monthly level. And, and again, it wasn't apparent to begin with, right? So only as peeling an onion, only by walking on that path, are you gonna figure out where you need to go. Often in large projects, you, the mistake you make is thinking that the shortest path between point A and point B, where you think you want to go, is a straight line. It's not, my friend, because you don't really know if that's really where you want to go. It's, it's some cloud somewhere here, and usually what happens is if you end up there, you figure out, oops, you know, this is, uh, this is not it. Oh, we needed to go over here. And then you try it again. Instead of that, it's better to move in these small zigzags. So the shortest path between two points is this zigzaggy line, at least when we were talking about building a Power BI project. So a lot of good uh, you know, discussion came from just looking at what Eric had built and presented. And I'll show you some, some of the other looks. So this was Teresa, and she took a very different angle, and she really focused on that weekday analysis. And this was really cool. I mean, we looked at the data, and we sliced and diced it different ways. But then we were talking about out, um, how can we get to that one metric which tells you like I mean it's all about being actionable right now don't just show me stuff tell me what action do I need to take so we talked about how if you look at the average retail or average income earned by weekday if it's high or low does that mean anything well it depends right that that's often the answer it depends and we might have to talk to Kimberly more about that that is she deciding her hours on a specific weekday, is she saying, I'm only going to work two days on Saturday, uh, two hours on Saturday and eight hours on Tuesday? Well, then you might want to do apples to apples and say average income per hour worked or something like that. And that would be apples to apples. And you compare that and see if Saturday you're earning a lot more money average per hour or not. So again, it, it's kind of that iterative process. So uh, we had some of that discussions and uh, Wasanta had built her dashboard as well and she had a lot of cool trends and high level numbers. In fact, it was funny. So two students, Eric and Wasanta, they both had this this column. And it's, you know, guys, names are important. They both called it and showed it and they said the take home, right? The take home income, take home money, something like that. And I asked them, and I said, where did you get that? I mean, and they said Kimberly had used those terms and they picked up on it, which I felt a little silly because I, I'm usually really good at capturing requirements and taking notes, but I hadn't picked up on that term. So that was that. And I'll show you a little bit of what the discussion came on and what our plan for the next coming weeks are. So for one, we realized that the data is at a different grain. So we have a plan to tackle that. What we're gonna show monthly, what we're gonna go daily. Uh, there was some discussion about number of clients. And, and again, this relates back to the grain of the data. Now, I, I didn't use these terms with, with Kimberly, uh, but I did talk about this in my class uh, and so forth. So uh, 
uh, the, we realized that the grain, if the data was more granular, if she was capturing client by client or client visit by client visit, there would be a lot more richness in the data. But we're going to work with what we have right now. We're not going to overly complicate it for her. Uh, uh, and then uh, there was good discussion on naming. So I'm big on names. I often, when I'm working with a client, I spend a fair bit of time like, huh, what should we name this? So we talked about that and I think we did simplify some stuff. For example, instead of calling it average ticket, we called it average ticket per client, which differentiates, which makes it clear what is the denominator, average by what. So average per client, retail average by client, and so forth. And we also did some cleanup of, of just concepts of naming on how we were naming the cash services and, and the money coming in from credit card. So overall, I mean, really good. I'm really happy. So last thing I wanna share with you is our plan for um, the the rest of the week. So we just finished week one and week two, the plan is to absorb all the feedback that we got from Kimberly and have all of that ready, uh, the new metrics that she asked for. And, and we all kind of nodded our heads and like, gosh, this is, this is easy. I mean, a lot of stuff she asked for, it's pretty quick change in Power BI. And of course we all love that part. Week three, we're gonna go to forecasting and I'll come back and talk about more. And week four, we're going to uh, tackle data entry. Now, you might be looking at this and you might feel that it's backwards, but I love doing this too, where I box the solution. And I say, you know what? We don't really care about exactly how data entry is done. I mean, so in, in the um, first meeting, in the initial discussion, we did brainstorm a bit and we had five different ideas of how we can enter data. I mean, somebody said, she is using, Kimberly is using Google Sheets right now. We could continue to use that. We said, you can use Excel online. She said she didn't even know that existed. That's a thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, we talked about forms. I like that idea. So yeah, I mean, it could be a lot of these different things, but you know what? Who cares? Because we know that no matter what tool is being used and exactly what, the way it's stored, we can clean shape transform using our magic wand query editor and bring it all into a single table. So we have abstracted that. We say, you know what, we'll deal with that later. And that way we can focus on the cool, heavy lifting Power BI stuff. It's all about the model and we build the model, we build the measures and we can show her the reports and iterate really quickly. And then data entry, we can solve it later using whatever we think is best. And sometimes you go into the data and that can change how you're entering data. I mean, you can say, you know what? I do want to capture client level detail. I mean, right now she's not, and we're going to try to keep it that way. So guys, uh, that's the plan. And, and you know, I will say, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I want to hear from the larger community what you think about this project. Uh, I want to hear if you are a, a, a local business, a small business, or even a big business, but you think you would be interested in something like this. Now, of course, the requirements are going to be that you need to come in with a data set that uh, it's it, you know you can share publicly, or if it's if it's sensitive data, you need to dummy up the whole data. So Kimberly has kind of done a bit of both, right? And then uh, I think it's a win-win because you're going to get a cool Power BI dashboard out of it. And of course, the students in my Learn Power BI program, they get to experience that whole journey and everybody comes out ahead. Uh, yeah, I like that. All right, my friends, until next time, power on.